Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cherie. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new, thank you so much for coming back. I know I look familiar from the last video, but we're just, it's filming day. It's filming day. So in this video, we are going to be talking about choosing where to work, choosing a specialty. Do you specialize? Do you stay at a hospital? And most importantly, a lot of people want to know how much are you going to make? So without further ado, let's get into the video. I have my notes here. We're ready to go. Choosing where to work. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you, you must start at a hospital because that's where you're going to learn everything. Now, that may not be the case for everyone, but here's why you should choose to start at a hospital first, at least for a year to get some exposure versus specializing right out the bat. So number one would say you learn everything. Of course, there's so much exposure, so much going on. When I started, I started at a level one trauma hospital. I got to scrub just about everything from vascular to ortho to ENT to plastics to GYN, everything from gunshot wounds to whipples to transplants to procurement, all of it, right? So you learn every single thing. You get a lot more exposure. There's so much more involved and you're just learning everything. Second thing is there's more help. When you work at a hospital, you're guaranteed to start orientation, especially if you apply for day shift, you're going to start working day shift hours, right? So when you work day shift and you first starting out, there's a lot of people around. There's a full floor of people running around doing things. Lots of people there to help you and to guide you, right? Lots of people to go to for assistance, for guidance, for help, whatever. So you are going to want that. You're going to want that support when you're first starting out because everything is going to be like, you don't know where anything is. You need help with this. You don't know what to pull. You don't know what the surgeon likes. So having more help is definitely beneficial. And then even when you get off orientation and you maybe want to work mid shift or even shift, there's still a good amount of people around and scheduled to help you. So that's something to think about. Number four, you get a better idea of what you would like to specialize in. Because honestly, I don't think you know right now. I don't think clinical is enough to like, I don't think I would, I had no idea. If I were to go to specialize after I was done with clinicals, I have no idea what I would have specialized in. But you have, an, you get the time to sort of figure out and do process of elimination. Someone asked me this question yesterday. How did I decide what specialty to specialize in? And it's because, and I told them, I did process of elimination. Every time, every day I went into a room, scrubbed a case, I would make a mental note. Hmm, I don't like this procedure. I don't like this type of, these types of surgeries, whatever. I would just make a mental note of what I liked, what I didn't like, because you're not gonna like everything, to be quite fair. Like, I hated urology. You can pay me to go scrub urology all day long absolutely not absolutely not <laughs> same thing with like gyn no ma'am could not get me to do that but you would i had a love-hate relationship with vascular and ortho i don't think i would enjoy doing them every single day though right so you get a better understanding you get to scrub these cases enough that you definitely by the end of your one year, two year, you can say, oh yeah, I have no interest in doing any of these things anymore. I wanna do just plastics or just ortho for the rest of my career, whatever. So that's something else, like it just gives you a better idea. You get uh, you get access to so many different surgeries and cases and whatever. You just, you're gonna have a better idea when it's time what you really wanna specialize in. You can at least narrow it down to three, top three and then pick. It's beneficial if you want to become a traveler and a lot of people want to get into this field because they think we make thousands and thousands of dollars and that's because their hand travelers make a lot of money. And so if you're thinking you're going to specialize right out of school and then go on to be a traveler with the only experience you know is scrubbing, it might work for ortho because they're always looking for like ortho people but you need, as a traveler, you need to be strong with trauma, neuro, ortho, and robotic surgery. They're always looking for those top four specialties because those are usually the case, tough cases that 
people don't always want to scrub so when you do a traveler position they want to put you in those rooms because you should have the experience to do so so that is something to think about if you want to be a traveler one day you should not specialize out of school because you will be very stuck and find it very difficult to get any travel position when the only thing you know is OBGYN. Not going to be helpful. So think about it. Now, let's say you have no interest in traveling. You have kids, maybe. You have a family and you just are not interested in working weekends, working holidays. You're not interested in being called in. Then yeah, it might be beneficial for you to specialize and work at a surgery center right away because you just have different priorities. So surgery centers are typically seven to five or seven to three, seven to five. Where I work right now, I work in plastic surgery, um, sort of like an office setting. We have one operating room and my day, last week I worked a 12 hour shift because at the end of the day, I'm the only scrub tech there. That's not always gonna be the case. I just happen to end up in a really unique place to work. But at a surgery center, sometimes there are limited people, staff that can, there's no one there to really relieve people because you're working one set, you're supposed to be working one set hour really. So if you run over a little bit, just know you're gonna be there finishing that case. But typically I would say they do seven to three or seven to five if a case runs over so you have a pretty consistent schedule versus working in a hospital where you might have to do longer shifts you're not getting relieved yada 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 whatever um <laughs> it's my cat my cats no she's just crazy um you just prefer consistency you're just a person that wants to know what they're doing when they're doing it who they're doing it with you want consistency at a surgery center or you know, at a surgery center, you're working with a set amount of surgeons. You know who they are. You know what they're doing, and that's fine. You don't mind repetitiveness because usually surgery centers, they probably only do like ortho, GYN, and then maybe ENT. I strictly do plastic surgery, so it's very repetitive for me. I don't mind that. Now, at least I don't. When I first started out, I would not have liked that. But yeah, it just depends on who you are, what's going on in your life at the time. It's not the end of the world if you want to specialize right out of school or you want to focus on just working at a surgery center. That's fine. If you have different priorities, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, if but if you have other, you want to travel and you want to potentially do different things, then you want to think about learning and doing a lot more at a hospital versus surgery center. But if your goals align with surgery center, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not the end of the world. If you don't think you're ever gonna travel and you're ever gonna go back to working at a hospital at some point in your life, then go to a surgery center. It's not the end of the world. It's just if your goals are different, where you may want to go on to PA school, go on to first assist school, it's definitely very beneficial for you to start out at a hospital and get as much exposure as you can that's very beneficial. That's really it. Um, we're gonna talk about pay. So on here, I'm going to place a map and this I got from the Association of Surgical Technology. I'm gonna put it here, so let me sketch a little bit. I'm gonna put it here so you guys can see this is gonna be an updated map. I got this off the Association of Surgical Technology site. They recently posted this. It's basically an overview of the average amount of money that surgical techs are making across the country. So this is an average. It's basically they get this information from people when they either sign up for the site, when they're first registering as new surgical techs, or when they're renewing their license, you put in how much money you're currently making. So this varies from who's starting out, who's been there forever, whatever. So this is not like a set amount that you're gonna be making right off the bat. So I wanna clarify that. But this is what the average looks like for different states so far for 2024. Again, it's gonna vary on whether you're working at a hospital, surgery center, your state, it's gonna vary on a lot of different things. But if you look at it, you can see which state, I know for me, when I, 
I got my training in Boston. I'm now working in the DMV. So for me, I like I wanted to see what different states were making. Maybe you're thinking about moving after school, going to a different state to go to school. This is a nice map to see what surgical techs are averaging right now. Um, it looks like the most, the highest paid states looks like Alaska and Nevada and California. Okay, so it looks like on the East Coast, you have Massachusetts coming in at 32. Um, Rhode Island pays, looks like $32. New York is 32. Again, Nevada is 35. Arizona is $31. California is 35. And, or California is 30, yeah, 35. As well as Alaska. Hawaii also pays really well at $35.88. Um, Washington State is at $30.89. You've got uh, Georgia at $26.93. Florida at $27.30. This is a great map for you to check out. So go to the Association of Surgical Tech dot org so asd.org to check out this map into detail again you know when you're starting out some hospitals depending on where you live depending on your state i know for i've talk, talked about this before i know boston pays fairly decent starting out techs and so does like dc areas uh, maryland is a little not as much not that much but it's still okay as a starting tech uh, so just do your research at the end of the day and make a decision that's going to benefit you the most, obviously. And the most important thing with picking a program is making sure your program is accredited. That's the most important thing to think about before you even start thinking about pay and all that stuff. Make sure your program is accredited. I will say that all the time. That's the most important thing. So that's it for this video, though. Um, again, check out the map on asd.org to see in depth in more detail what the pay scale and average right now is for 2024 for surgical techs and also asd is a very good resource for you guys to get any questions answered and to see your particular state laws and legislation and things like that um there's a lot of good read on there to just get familiar with your organization if you're becoming a surgical tech or if you're not um, i'm subscribed to them i'm a member so i get the monthly subscription magazine it's always a good read but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and this video was also helpful to you guys as always feel free to comment down below and reach out to me on my instagram to chat and if you want any advice I'm always happy to I'm so tired. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see. I don't know why I'm still over here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. And always for coming back and checking out my videos. Don't forget to check out my other videos if you care anything about who I am outside of surgical tech. I post travel content. I have a Puerto Rico vlog that is live on my channel right now. If you guys want to go ahead and check that out. I do travel vlogs and weekly vlogs on there as well. So go ahead and check that stuff out. And follow me on Instagram at Life with Cherie. And as always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you and bye.